Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Coach the Coach Radio. Brought to you by the Business Radio X Ambassador Program, the no-cost business development strategy for coaches who want to spend more time serving local business clients and less time selling them. Go to brxambassador.com to learn more. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Coach the Coach Radio, and this is going to be a fun one. Today on the show, we have Adina Saperstein, and she is with Adina Rose Coaching. Welcome. Hi, good to be here. Well, I'm excited to learn what you're up to. Tell us a little bit about your practice. How are you serving folks? Yeah, absolutely. So I um, refer to myself as an integrative coach, uh, which means that I integrate uh, more traditional transformational life coaching, along with some other modalities that I am trained in and practice, uh, including yoga therapy and other forms of healing arts. Uh, I practice Reiki. I have been a yoga and meditation instructor for many years. And so when I work with people, um, I work in two ways. Some clients, I do stick more to the conventional coaching, if that's what they are looking for and weave in the other pieces a little more subtly, um, some of the more energetic aspects of working through blockages and just really tapping into your full potential. Um, and then some clients I do a longer, longer integrative sessions where I actually do formal work with them on movement and, or a, sometimes a, a Reiki session or whatever it may be, people who are more receptive to and seeking out that kind of more holistic approach. Now, do you find that in this kind of chaotic time that we're living through right now, maybe this transitional period, um, that self-care has kind of been elevated to much more importance and and people are becoming more mindful about the importance of self-care? I think absolutely that it has, but it's a bit of a catch-22 because, of course, a lot of the structures that people may have had in place or may want to access uh, to access self-care have been compromised. Um, So working from home, not being able to get to a gym or a yoga studio, a lot of those have not even been open. So obviously that makes it really tricky. And one piece that I think that I've found with a lot of my clients, as well as colleagues, uh, coaches and other other, uh, wellness practitioners and and such, is that, you know, as a result of of the flexibility that we have in our schedules, which of course, we're always really um, excited about that flexibility. And that's one of the things that draws a lot of people to coaching, I think, is that that flexibility in our in our schedules and in our lives, but actually in a way that can um, really actually be detrimental to our self-care when we have no uh, or very little uh, routine, regular routine and rhythm in our days, day to day, um, that can make it really tricky to uh, get in the kinds of self-care disciplines, whether it's practice or nutrition, nourishment that comes with having sort of set meals at certain times. This is something that uh, has come through a lot of uh, my training in yoga therapy and comes from uh, from from many of the the Eastern traditions. Is just the the real need to have uh, routine and regularity day to day in order for our bodies to be able to get into a rhythm. So it can be really um, challenging, even more so when we have uh, uh, when the the externally imposed structures that came for a lot of us from, you know, going to a, 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 a workplace um, are taken away. And then, you know, a, again, for coaches in general, who, who don't tend to have those kinds of as much of those as externally imposed uh, structures and routines, um, even more so challenging. Now, how does um, 
kind of the need for your services typically present themselves to a prospective client, what are they struggling with? Uh, what are maybe some of the breadcrumbs or symptoms that maybe they're going through and not aware that maybe they need uh, kind of some help or some conversations with you or a person like you? Sure. Um, well, I think number one is just a feeling of stuckness. Um, that was certainly what, what drew me to coaching as a client before I became a coach myself. Um, just a, a feeling of being stuck, whether um, some people uh, that come to me have an idea of what it is that they would like to do, but are sort of stuck on the precipice of actually taking the leap to to go for it. And some, uh, for some, it's it's much vaguer, just a a feeling of discontent with their current situation and maybe a vague concept of, of what they might want to do uh, differently. Um, so sometimes the, the health and wellness piece is more pronounced. Um, and increasingly, as I have stepped up my work in the, the yoga therapy um, piece that has been um, uh, there have been more people coming to me with with that uh, particular um, aspect, but generally, it generally it tends to be people who are either uh, aspiring entrepreneurs or early stage people who have either recently sort of taken the leap to leave a full-time job or go to part-time or something like that to carve out time for another pursuit that they're interested in, or are again, just, just sort of trying to line things up and, and, um, in, and, and energetically sort of brace themselves to be able to take that leap. Now let's, uh, if you don't mind, share some advice for those folks who are at the precipice. Is there some things they could be doing or thinking about when it is that time where they're struggling or maybe getting the nerve up to take that leap into leaving something that maybe feels secure, but maybe isn't really secure, but it feels secure and then pursuing something that has more purpose? Sure. Um, Well, number one, I would say, and this is something that I think a a lot of coaches start sessions by asking, um, and I certainly was trained to, to do this. Uh, which is to identify and anchor into all of the resources that they have available. So whether that's family or friends or other support structures in their community, whether that is um, whether that's financial and and uh, finding creative ways, um, which there are so many of these days of accessing financing, whether it's, you know, whether it's crowdsourcing, whether it's uh, resources that may be available from, uh, from a loved one um, in some creative way. I do feel like it's important to name here uh, that there's a lot of privilege in involved in, I think the, the, uh, the, world in which coaching tends to happen. So people obviously have to be able to pay for coaching. And there's often, unfortunately, an assumption that there are resources available somewhere to tap into um, that may not be actually the case. So I think just taking a really realistic view of what those resources are on all those different fronts, emotional uh, psychological, financial, um, other, other types of resources. And then, um, uh, being really realistic about that. And I will, I'll share, you know, in, in my own story at the moment when I, um, took the leap and left my full-time career, um, about 12 years ago. And I, I staged it. I first went to part-time and I, I, I began, I created another income stream, um, that I was able to rely on, uh, before I really took that leap. But even so, even, even with that, um, all of that in place, um, if I, you know, looking back, I, if I were coaching somebody in that, um, in that situation, I probably would advise to even take it even slower, leaving that security, um, you know, that safety net of a job. It's, it's nothing to, take lightly. Um, 
and can certainly lead if it's if it happens uh, too quickly can lead to a lot of anxiety and and things that and situations that um, uh, aren't uh, aren't ideal. So I would say just definitely tread tread carefully and first and foremost identify and anchor into all of the resources. Um, really excavate all of the resources available to you. Now, since you've been uh, doing coaching, I'm assuming that your uh, methodology has evolved based on what you're learning. It sounds like you're a lifelong learner and you're always looking uh, for more information to make more informed decisions. Have you kind of stumbled upon a methodology yourself that is the Adina methodology that kind of summarizes the path that your clients are now, uh, or you recommend your clients following? Um, yes, I'll share that. And I'll also start, you know, I really have been um, trained to always start by acknowledging my own teachers and the lineages in all of the very, all of the various lineages that I draw from, which are really vast. As you said, I do really consider myself a lifelong teacher, I've had, had the benefit of uh, of learning and absorbing from many, many different um, wisdom lineages, both spiritual and um, in the coaching realm. Uh, I was trained by Joanna Lindenbaum um, in her Sacred Depths training course. So I just want to acknowledge her first of all. Um, she was what really uh, drew me into and really gave me the foundation of coaching um, and other many other teachers as well that I draw from. But what, so with that said, um, what I have developed that is sort of, I would say my signature is sort of a four part um, approach. So, and I call it the, the, uh, well, it started as the gear up. So the acronym is gear, G-E-A-R, which I'll share in a moment, uh, in a moment. And I started by calling it gear up. And then what I really, what I realized is that um, it's more about shifting into the, the right gear for you in the moment uh, that you're in. So that may be shifting up that uh, gearing up, that may be gearing down and really acknowledging where we are in the cycles of our own energetic uh, world, as well as the seasons, which really um, inform the energy that's that's coming through us at a particular time. So finding our own gear and the the, uh, the acronym is uh, G is ground. So that's the foundation of really everything I do. And we that word is thrown around a lot. Um, so I'll just define what it means to me is to really anchor into our location in time and space. So really just anchoring into where are we right now? And part of that for me is anchoring into our values, you know, at, in, in our, in our life, in the present moment, what's really, what do we really want to ground into to, as a foundation for whatever we do today and in the period that we are, that we're foreseeing, anticipating, planning for. Um, so ground, the second is envision. And I do a lot of uh, a lot of work on visioning, visualization. I do a lot of guided, um, guided visualization practices to really, um, from that place of grounding, visualize where would you like to be, whether it's a two-year uh, or a five-year trajectory that we're that we're thinking towards. Um, usually, five years at, at the most, and really encouraging people to really let that vision crystallize. And with each session, I ask people, I ask my clients to um, write out that vision again and again and revisit that vision um, so that it becomes, it starts to crystallize in more and more detail. And I will tell you some of the, the things that I have seen come to fruition that based on those, uh, those really detailed crystallized visions have been quite astounding to me um, the way that reality starts to line up with those visions so it's it's a really powerful practice um, 
And so, which leads into the A, uh, which is actualize. And that's where we get into the nuts and bolts of how to make these things happen, right? So my work really balances the two parts of sort of the energetic uh, work of of getting people through blockages and, and really creating the momentum to move forward. And then the nuts and bolts. My background is in consulting, um, business consulting. That was my first career, um, which I did internationally. Um, I worked in 20 countries. So I have a, a, a lot of project management experience. I have a, a lot of, um, uh, you know, I'm a big believer in really getting into the details of how are we going to make this actually act actually happen um uh these uh the 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 plans that result in those in those um in those visions um and then the r is um twofold uh actually it's um i reflect and also reset so this is a process of just constantly going back and and reflecting on where where how far, how far we've come, what have we done skillfully? What could we have done more skillfully? Are there aspects of this vision or, or, or the action plan that we want to refine? Um, and then, and, and resetting just constantly um, touching back into where we are energetically giving ourselves again, coming back to the self care resetting with self care practices and spiritual practices, whatever they may be for the individual to, again, put us in a place to really be in a constant, uh, in a constant flow with this, with this work. Now, how do you help your clients who might be stuck in maybe the envisioning part of this where they do vision boards and they can visualize what they would like their life to be, but it's almost like they're using that as a stalling tactic uh, to take the next step of the actualization and the action that's needed to help make those dreams come true? Absolutely. I mean, great, great question. Um, and this is where getting into really specific action steps, homework, I mean, um, just really giving very concrete, really, uh, and, and it's, they're co-created assignments. I'm not just, uh, dictating, <laughs> go do this, <laughs> you know, this week, it's very, it tends to come very intuitively in terms of, um, of, um, co-creating those, uh, with a client, but just an example that comes to mind in terms of bridging that gap. So I have, um, a couple of clients actually working on book projects and, um, this is a, a piece of advice that I was given at one point when I was actually working on a, a book project several years ago, which is to go to go visit bookstores and begin to visualize uh, your book on the shelves. So that is still that sort of that's an example of something that kind of bridges the gap. It's still it's still in the vision in the visioning and visualizing realm, but there is a concrete action uh, in terms of just getting out of the house, going to a bookstore, actually doing, uh, doing something uh, about it. And then from there, that's when we can get into the really the nuts and bolts of what are you going to tackle this week? Are we going to, can we agree to five pages this week on this book proposal? That, that kind of thing. Now, you mentioned earlier the importance of having some sort of a support network around you of people, fans, maybe uh, financiers, people helping there, cheering you on. Um, how important is developing this kind of a community in, in a person's work? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I feel that it's crucial and there's, there's two parts to it, right? There's so much community building now that's, that's done in the, in the online realm, which is, absolutely very, very powerful. Um, absolutely. Um, and at the same time, I think that often many of us, especially if we live in bigger cities, um, can really just, uh, focus, put all of our, our energy on 
in, in that sphere. And what tends to be lost is the real uh, hands-on, face-to-face community building of just getting to know, getting to know uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, like-minded souls, colleagues, whatever it may be, actually in your community. Um, and I, I myself moved um, about four years ago from uh, from New York, uh, Brooklyn, up to the Hudson Valley. Um, I live in, in the town of Catskill, which is a lovely little, lovely little town. And there are a few other uh, really vibrant towns uh, right around us. And um, I, it has been really a, a joy and a privilege to just be able to form community in a smaller sort of microcosm of, of uh, you know, of a town in a, in a region like this, where it's really a matter of getting to know other, uh, other entrepreneurs, business owners, uh, seeing in even people who are, you know, just working in the, in the local community, but interest potentially interested in, again, you know, starting their own business or making some kind of shift and just getting to know people through word of mouth. Um, more and more uh, of my clients have been coming to me that way. Um, and it's become a really nice opportunity to start to envision, to do this visualizing uh, practice, not just on the individual level, but really on the community level. And and engaging in dialogue with uh, with these peers and, and colleagues around what would we like our community uh, to look like in five years? How can we really be a hub of wellness and inner work and, you know, um, uh, entrepreneurship and all of these things that we're all individually committed to, but how can we support each other? around that and really uh, create a community around that. So I would say, um, you know, certainly again, the, the online community building is, can be really powerful and really nourishing, um, but not to let that replace uh, old fashioned uh, face-to-face community building. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a, um, the internet, I guess the, you know, the yin and the yang of the internet is that it's global and it's the world, but there's a community right around you, you know, walking distance. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people forget about that. And they're so focused on connecting with people all over the world because it seems so vast and the opportunity seems so grand, um, which is great and true. But it's also you can really make a difference in your neighborhood or in your community or your town uh, just by walking outside. And a lot of people forget that, I think, and they're so tied to uh, electronic devices, they forget that, you know, human to human contact is something that's been around for a long time, and it's not going anywhere either. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, uh, I'm just reminded of uh, Gabby Bernstein, who got her start really in her motivational speaking empire by going to her local community centers and just asking to be able to give these talks for free, you know, to people and just offering that. And that's, that's how she started, you know, so that's a pretty, um, pretty powerful testimonial. Yeah, I agree. I think that, uh, I think there's a parable or a book called like acres of diamonds that a lot of people are scouring the earth to find this, uh, pot of gold when it might be in your backyard. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if somebody wants to learn more about your practice and get a hold of you and um, just check out what you got going on, uh, is there a website? Yeah, yeah. AdinaRose.com. So A-D-I-N-A is my name. And uh, Rose, uh, which is my middle name, um, named after uh, a, my a great grandmother. So using that name, which I don't use normally is actually has been part of my sort of ancestral healing journey. So adinarose.com. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story today. You're doing important work and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks for, uh, thanks for reaching out. It's been a pleasure talking to you. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on coach the coach radio. Yeah. 